Welcome to the Duke Cardiology Fellows blog. I'm Prithiti Kazani, Duke Cardiology Fellow. Today I'm accompanied by Dr. Horng Chen from Hi. the Mayo Clinic, and we're going to be discussing dose AHF, uh, which is a trial that's coming out tomorrow. Um, and Dr. Cheng, you are part of the Heart Failure Network that's funded by the NHLBI. Tell me a little bit about the Heart Failure Network. I'm one of the fellows, but I'd like to hear it from you. Yeah, the Heart Failure Network uh, is sponsored by the NI NHLBI. Um, its goal is to put together uh, academic uh, research centers uh, to carry out heart failure studies uh, that will be clinically relevant and impact uh, clinical practice. Well, tell me a little bit about Dose AHF. It's, it's one in a series of Heart Failure Network trials that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, and tell me a little bit about the trial design and what the study found. Great, yeah. So a bit about the background. Uh, previous small studies have uh, demonstrated that low-dose dopamine may have renal-specific actions and may improve renal function and enhance diuresis in patients with acute heart failure. Now, the ASCEND study has taught us that at, given at the standard dose, uh, Neseritide is safe, but it does not impact uh, renal function or clinical outcomes. However, smaller studies and preclinical studies have shown that when used at a lower dose, which is less hypotensive, Neseritide too may have renal-specific actions and hence have the potential to enhance diuresis and preserve renal function. So the Rose AHF study has a very unique design in the sense that it is designed to test two independent hypotheses. Mm -hmm. Our first hypothesis is that when added to diuretic therapy, low-dose dopamine will enhance diuresis and preserve renal function. And our second hypothesis is that with low-dose neseritide, that it too can enhance diuresis and preserve renal function in patients with heart failure and uh, uh, reduce renal function. So we recruited patients that have been admitted with acute heart failure within the first 24 hours. They had to have an estimated GFR of between 50 to 60. A total of 360 patients were recruited from uh, 26 sites uh, in the heart failure network. To minimize the number of patients who require central line placement, we initially randomized these patients in a one-to-one -one open fashion into the Neseritide strategy and the dopamine strategy. Now within each strategy, the patients are then randomized in the blinded two-to-one fashion uh, to active drug therapy versus placebo for 72 hours. So, in, um, so we have a total of 119 patients in the dopamine, sorry, in the low-dose neseritide group, 122 patients in the low-dose dopamine group, mm -hmm. and both these groups are compared independently to the pooled placebo group where we have 119 patients. Another thing of note is that all patients uh, receive standard, standardized diuretic therapy for 24 hours. Uh, and we use a dose of 2.5 times the outpatient dose, which was the diuretic dose tested in our previous study, the dose study. Yeah, so that, that's basically the, the, the rationale and the outline and of the design of the study. Okay. And I know that the study wasn't powered to look at half PEF versus half REF outcomes, but uh, I understand there were some differences between the two groups in terms of their response to these therapies. Right. So uh, the primary endpoint for the study uh, was a core primary endpoint of uh, um, cumulative urine volume during the 72 hour period and change of cystatin C from baseline to 72 hours. and the pr and. The primary results of the study was that you know we did we did not meet these primary endpoints. So both low dose neseritide and low dose dopamine uh, uh, did not do better as compared to placebo. However, when we did look at subgroup analysis, um, there was certainly a suggestion that there's a differential response in patients with preserved EF as compared to uh, reduced EF. Uh, in the dopamine strategy, in patients with preserved EF who received dopamine, their urine volume was less as compared to the placebo group. And in the Neseritide strategy, in those patients with reduced ejection fraction who received low-dose Neseritide, their urine volume was greater 
and their change to statin level was lower as compared to placebo. So hence, there's certainly a suggestion for differential response according to their ejection fraction. And once again, that was a subgroup analysis. So what would you like to see in future trial designs for acute heart failure trials in terms of, do you think we should be looking at HEF-REF patients separately from HEF-PEF patients and separate these patients when they come in? I mean, in my opinion, I think, I think the answer is absolutely yes. Um, you know, acute heart failure is such a broad definition mm -hmm. and it encompasses such a diverse group of patients, actually. And I think, you know, Certain treatments may work for patients to reduce EF, while others may work better for those to preserve EF. And that may be one of the reasons why a lot of our acute heart failure studies have not been positive. Um, so I think as we move forward, uh, because of the unmet need for acute heart failure therapies, we should start looking and powering our studies to be able to answer the question if these subset of patients uh, could respond differently. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Cheng. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Um, and thank you for, uh, for coming to us at the Duke Cardiology Fellows blog.